Jacob Zuma without money is powerful because people are willing yeah, to boy, serve Ubab Zuma without getting a single cent. People will serve Ubab Petris because he's paid them. Ubab Zuma could just, and, and that, that speaks volumes. Welcome to the Venting Podcast. Thank you for, sus- for subscribing. Thank you for sharing my clip. We are young in our TikTok. Young in our Jalan Share Corner. Fandaka Kati Hotman Lam. Ningbona and Jesse. We had a small conversation, but already singing Zone in Yan. Mr. Black. Excellent. You mean you're Hotmani? Yeah, you have. Except we think we're the same age, me and you. Why are you lying to the people? How old are you? I'm the same age as you. How old are you? What? Whatever age you are, I'm the same age. <laughs> okay. Mplomene ninja yam. Mplomene ninja yam. The black penguin has it. Shagging your pillow and put on. Your pillow put on. Thank you, bro. I'm a zombie. I'm not. You know, I'm feel like my style is the same name. I'm feel like. No, it must happen. Serious. Yeah. And then you, you're saying I'm lost. I'm lost. It's on Tumbeza. Yeah. Ubabu kashugena e mpopomeni. Yeah, how week? You only do me aga. She comes from Megufugen near Ladysmith. Oh yeah. Kz yeah. in as well. Yeah, unfa na waga zulunch. It's just unfortunately I've left my zuluness. <laughs> but outside of that, um, <laughs> let's talk about yeah. that later. Sure. I know what you've left. You you've left your zuluness, and yeah, you, you know, for now, Mr. Black Queen, it's the Black Penuel. This name, man. Why not be like a like your clan name? Maybe it's gonna sound bad. Pen Pen is the easiest. You pen take... is the easiest. I write, I, I rap, I speak. Uh, yeah, pen. Why don't you call yourself by your clean name, Vel? Because uh, I'm like, I've never heard this name before. I used to be or anywhere in the interview. But I'm yeah. So I need to first start off by giving a shout out to the Venting Podcast. I want to thank you, Anu Mama, you know, Kokos Koteni, for what you guys have built. I'd like to think Undisputed, you guys are the fastest growing podcast maybe even on the African continent, the Think. numbers that you guys have done, I think within maybe like 36 episodes at over close to 370,000 subscribers is insane. You can look at the biggest podcasts in this country. Mm-hmm. None of them have grown as fast as you guys have grown. So that's fucking amazing. And I just want to say congrats ah, to the you. two of you. Thank and you. I hope that you guys, if you guys keep at this, you probably want to hit a million next year and then go beyond. And then the challenge is going to be for you guys to keep the moment, momentum going. So thank you to the Venting Podcast. Thank you to your subscribers. Thank you to your viewers. And thank you for the content that you guys are sharing. It's educational. It's enlightening. Uh, it's controversial. It's trash. Because there's some gossip <laughs> there. But yeah. people love it, man. And and shout out to you guys for that. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Pen. Umlochwa, because my father, Umlochwa, Uzita is our main clan name. Um, we did not have surnames as people before. Lento Ebongo, or the way we understand Ebongo today, is mostly colonial and because of home affairs, so that it's easy to assign who to Daki, where is he? Similar to the borders, the borders are not our own. We didn't decide saying, Ning is he, we decided these are colonial. So when we fight today with this xenophobia and those things, it's not something that we chose. What you would choose is that you know, so, tet, or so, nyambo, or singapa, so, so, so you don't cross a certain mountain or a certain river because we decide. Mm-hmm. Same way, this is your home. Unveiling yeah. Whenever I feel like it. But the idea that is, is a surname and then we fight and all your kids. Nah, at some point. At some point. These were men. You know, they, for whatever reason, were really strong men and they were strong leaders. And when the colonial system came in and they asked, where are you from? And you're like, no, I'm from the house of Shang. But okay, your surname is going to be Ushang. And then from there on, it becomes Ushang. But Kashashi into the Sasinayo was Amakamu Baba and then Umland. Umland okay, will always be there. So, Jobu uh, Monde, for example, your kids will be in Ghana Zamonde. Ushang will then be the origin, but their most important thing will be this is me. That's why even today, the king of the Zulus, or Misu Zulu, was very thin. Ushaga, who Ushaga was sent to the corn, sent to the corn It wasn't Ushaga Zulu, and who sent to the corn as Zulu. That didn't exist. What would happen is the people would be, for example, the Zulu people. Kodwa, you'd mark yourself by your father's name. You'd mark yourself by 
where you guys are based in Tabeni, or you'd mark yourself with an animal totem, see Abantu Ben or the Kwena or the Taung, whatever. It it Lento Ebong was a colonial thing. So for me, I don't need my surname to define me. Uh, I find my name to be more powerful, number one. And number two, I find the work that I'm doing to be more powerful. So Mautum Lodge, or you could be speaking about anyone, but Mauti Pen or Penwell, people know exactly who you're speaking to. My kids out there, if they go and they say, ah, I'm Lodge, no one really knows what I mean, but they're like, oh no, Uncle's Vala, I got black pen. Like, it's it's I'm not good. It's like, sure. So that's that's why I don't highlight the surname thing. People that tend to highlight surnames in this country normally have very big, very popular, very successful surnames. If I'm Kulwami or my great grandfather, I'd probably want to go around telling people, you know, my great grandfather. Mm. Or if you tell me, but in the absence of that, yeah, you hold on to what is big for you. It could be a nickname. It could be whatever record label you're signed to. It could be a company you work for. Kwanabandabai Kaza, just on which I work for this big company. And that becomes your, I guess, your label for people to, to identify you by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when it comes to the name, the the name you openly, is it the name Ego IT or you gave it to you when? Because I know a lot of, isn't Ozako, you just when I was change our way. Sure. Uh, most of the things we have are man made. It's one of the things that has been stolen from us as people. The idea of God for me personally, I'm not speaking on behalf of people, the idea of God is something that was stolen from us because God was within. And then certain people came and told us that God is external. And then they started defining what this external God looked like. And one of the things is maybe it doesn't look like us or he behaves in a certain way, or he is jealous. So then it's like, be scared of this God thing. But most of the things are within us. You can decide who to funuba or shang, or you can change your surname to unkhov, or your surname, it can be whatever, because you are a strong man who identifies that I can define those things. I do not know how it came about that my mom stumbled upon this name called Penuel. Mm. It is actually a Hebrew name from the Bible. Uh, it's from Genesis, where Jacob wrestled an angel and after wrestling an angel said i have seen god i've wrestled god i've seen the face of god so officially the name penwell is uh, hebrew for the face of god and i think not i think i know that names carry weight and i i guess it was always going to be my destiny Uti. being named the face of god i was at some point going to realize that i am god himself or herself or themselves um, and it's a name that i've owned i've just i like the shortened part of pen because I've been writing all of my life. Uh, I've, I've rapped at some point, I sing, and even when I was rapping, I call myself the black pen. I draw in black pen. Um, it's a nice name and, and, and it sticks and it's easy and it's global. Uh, anyone can, can say it's pen. That's me. So I own that, but my full name is Penwell, Penuel, it's Hebrew. Yeah, I was telling Justice Sister Teguti, I think I've known Penuel from when he was a corporate guy. I think from... Because <laughs> you were popular back then, I think on Twitter. When I was still working in banking. You were that guy, sweet guy. I still remember because I used to see your, your videos on Twitter a lot. I think it was 2016, if, 20, if not 2017. Sure. Around that time, you were still a corporate guy, right? I was Correct corporate me from... guy. I'll tell you, I was a corporate guy from 2010 till 20. 13 and then I did a contract a nine-month contract 2017 2017 18 somewhere like oh yeah I still yeah. remember still remember those times because I, I I used to come across your videos a lot with tweet and I used to ask myself who was this guy and like, Maybe why Facebook. Because I was big on Facebook Twitter I used Twitter to trust me because but I was, Facebook I used to love yeah I was checking my because you know what I, what I did on my tweet it doesn't find in Tonyana. It's always I'm a video informative. So I came across one of your videos that I shared. Really? <clears throat> yeah, that's I what I, I, I did. I don't, I don't share a lot of. Isn't doing Twitter. I'm, I'm very careful looking at So I came across one of your videos. So I want to take you back when you were still a corporate guy and then breaking that to go to Uzumel and being a businessman to this black pen. Sure. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to go to. How did you break through, go to Utrinasol independently? Because, yeah. you know, we, we told her now how to think or what to see, what not to see. Sure. Really. How did you break that chain? Because, you know, it's it's a lonely space because I once tried to go to but I saw it's a lonely space. 
It's not nice when you're having a conversation with people in the Nubu Gagana Chasanya because you see things I want to but it's not nice. Yeah. I know that. Uh, I wrote on the song that Sluice Kuluman Kulme now, and it's normal. But after the encryption, like, okay, if I want to go, it's okay. There are no good things I'm going to be better now. No, it's not like that. You know? So that's what I'm saying. I know it's a lonely, lonely space. So I want to know how did you break? Le lo site lo corporate le no businessmen and silubo play u play pen sure. and then stick to that with a no muba no tutin. This is how I think. This is how I view things. You know, there's a joke that parents, black parents, normally give. Which the more you become knowledgeable, you get closer to ksanya to becoming crazy. The more knowledgeable you are, the more questions you ask. It's like you're going towards insanity. Mm. And there's some truth to it. The more history you study. The more you study commercialism and capitalism, the more you study politics, the more you even venture into your own family tree, yeah. you realize that the world that we live in is not real. By that I mean everything beyond your body, the earth, animals, rocks, the ocean, time. Um, everything is not real. And it has been created by human beings. There are certain human beings that devised the type of languages we speak today. They devised the clothing that we wear today. They devised what we call religious scriptures. They devised what we call a purpose today. There are kids that wake up every day and on their laptop wallpaper, on their wall, they've got a picture of a Ferrari. They've got an, a mental idea of the mansion they want to live in. Those are not real things. They were created by human beings and we started chasing them in my life i've always had a curious mind and i've always asked questions i was one of those kids and there's a lot of us out there i i don't know if we're enlightened or if we have a disease but we just want to know more and in knowing more you end up reading a lot of books you speak to a lot of people and when you do that you start realizing that true power is not in the external but in the internal and I guess in the journey of life, there are human beings, celebrities that you bump into that remind you of this. Part of mine have been Tupac. Tupac was a serious Shh. rebel and a serious mind. Yo, Mvana. Yeah. Ski star, Mr. Penn. No, go for it. Yeah, I once wrote on yeah, my Facebook. Yeah. You could sit there. I once wrote on my Facebook, I'm so blessed to see, I was talking about Kanye because I didn't get to see with Tupac, I didn't yeah. get to see Steve Jobs. Okay, Steve Jobs maybe gone, yeah, but yeah. PP fashion. But just to see you, can you see what happens when you you when you get in line with your inner self? Yeah, yeah. And then we, because with Tupac, when it comes to Park, that's one job. Like, immediately, I'm in portrait, guys. Sure. But Mamlande Lupac, you see with you, Mvana. He was insane. Sure. So Tupac is one of them. Lauren Hill, you. One of the greatest minds we've ever had. Uh, of course, Kanye West. Uh, the God. So, so what these guys are, have done is, and in one of the things we don't know is, these are free thinkers. We don't know what a free thinker is. And back in the day, if you go around telling these stories, people would say, "What you are But why is the moon like this? But why must we eat the You like our face? Just shut up. You're asking too many questions. But as we become more woke, more conscious, we're asking ordinary questions like, "Why do we part with soap?" Why do we use toilet paper? Why do we have to take these pills? It's always been done, but why? And these guys are free thinkers and we are scared of being exposed to free men and free women. Where Harriet Tubman is a popular lady who freed a lot of slaves in America. And one of her favorite or one of her famous quotes is, I would have freed so many more slaves if, if they knew they were slaves. Something happens when a lion is in a cage watching another lion out there running around, eating whatever they want. It's like, Baba, when you whatever time you want, whatever you want, no it. Everyone knows three meals a day. Everyone knows breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Mm. Everyone knows that kids must go to school. Everyone knows you need a matric. Who are you? You're like, I'm a free man. It's something you've never experienced in your life, and I hope I become a light. Um, Jesus Christ can be real to believers and can be fictional to non-believers. Mm -hmm. But whether you believe he's real or whether you believe he's fake, the bottom line is as a symbol, he's one of the most powerful symbol symbols that we have in society today. Jesus Christ was a free thinker. 
Jesus Christ walked around the streets saying, I am the son of God. You know, you've got Kanye now saying, I'm a God. It's a similar thing. You've got me now saying, Penel is God. It's a free thinker saying, whatever you think is the beginning and the end and the purpose, I am that. And he went around inspiring and igniting love and peace, similar to Bob Marley. And the people of the day were like, nah, this guy's liberating too many people mentally. <coughs> Other people are going to go around saying, but we're also the children of God. We also want to move our own way. And mind you, Jesus was a minimalist like me. He lived on very little. He was a traveler and an explorer. He had his homies, not D12, yeah, Eminem, but he had his 12 <laughs> disciples. Um, and the people of the day were like, nah, we need to take this guy out. And we need to not only take him out, but we need to sh put him on a cross for everyone to see this is what happens when you think for yourself. Yeah. We've got cancel culture today, and Ukanye West is almost similar. They've said he's crazy. They've said he's on meds, and he says it at times. I, I don't think he believes he's crazy. I think he says it as a form of uh, protection. Mm. Um, we have cancel culture where you get crucified on social media. We see it with Andrew Tate. He was put in jail. We see it with Russell Brand as well. He's been accused of things... Um, so I'm giving you a long answer to like a, a short thing of I grew up in a system that imprisons all of us. Yeah. And I spent a big chunk of my life today trying to find answers to life's most difficult questions. Why are we here? Where do we come from? Where are we going? And in my life later on, I realized that I do not need to work in corporate to earn a living. Money is not the beginning and the end of life. I do not have to bow down to some man I do not have to align my brand to a company. Just because I have a qualification does not mean it defines me, does not mean I'm smart or I'm stupid. And I can live according to my own rules. Um, I did the school thing, I did very well at school. I did the tertiary thing, I did well at tertiary. I went into work, it was looking very promising. I was going to be an amazing banker or finance person. But I was like, my purpose, if there is such a thing, is bigger than this. It's bigger than hip hop for Tupac. It's bigger than hip hop for Kanye. It's bigger than hip-hop and movies for Lauryn Hill. It's bigger than a, a cell phone or a computer for Steve Jobs. It's like my purpose is to liberate minds and to tell people you are enough on your own. And when that hit me, I was like, I have no choice but to go as, as hard as I can and light as many candles as possible so that we can fucking burn this whole thing. And the people that run the world can stop imprisoning good talented visionary people because when you do that you, you take humanity backwards and when you've got dumb rich elite people running the world they destroy it mm. that's why we've got serious unemployment serious poverty so many wars people are getting sick it's because it's like the spoiled child from some family getting to run the town not understanding the cost of what it takes to actually be successful and then they end up oppressing all the smartest kids that can build a great town just because they, their father or their mom was rich. You need to get rid of those people and you need to tell these poor kids, Wuti, you can become whatever you want to be. Money won't define it. A nice car won't define it. It is you and it is you alone. And once you believe you have God in you, nothing should ever be able to stop you. And that's the journey that I'm on now. I've got my own belief system. I'm living according to my rules. And I'm hoping, like the guys that came before me, can add Steve Beagle, can Mal add Malcolm X. Um, they inspired me and they ignited me. So I'm trying to do the same for people that come after me. Because we are suppressed and oppressed and someone needs to unlock the gate and be like, bro, you can fly away. You don't need to be in this cage. It's not the only place you can get food. There's another way. Yeah. I love the answer, man. And I love the way you, you answer my questions. Like, you, you make it broad for one to understand. Yeah. Like, yeah, you don't just... It annoys some people because I, I talk too much. I'll try to simplify. Sometimes it's good talking too sometimes much. Sometimes it's yeah. necessary. Yeah, sometimes it's necessary. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. When it comes to that, Mr. Penn, I want you... Because you, you get to see the world in a different view after you, you find your inner self, right? Yeah. And then... There comes the ceiling now, and then you get introduced to this world at Nam, and the world is not how I, I used to view it. Mm -hmm. The world is very different. And now you get to see how the world is run. You get to see why politics are necessary, why why about fucking place, why this and that and that and that. And then for you to survive, and then you're like, okay, I cannot live like that. Maybe I need cash. Maybe if I can be wealthy enough, 
I can break this system. That's yeah. why maybe Kanye said, wait till I get my money right. Yeah. That was mad of him. Because even in the documentary, he said, I'm just playing along now just to get there. Yeah. But once I get there, they're going to see the real me. Yeah. That's what he's doing now. So that's what I saw now earlier on. It's okay. Axis, if you say, Kasi, Uzobona, listen to Ganje, and then on the next, no more Kulumus or Kulumukulum, but it won't make sense. Unless if you get a couple of dollars or a couple of rents, a couple of dollars or a couple of pounds, and then you you, you straight, and then you're like, nah, man, I don't see it like this. And then, but lucky enough, now we have YouTube, you can just talk as is in, of which my resin is very restricted, like what they did to Andrew Tate. Yeah. So, in Tongi Buza, I go to now. Did you want it first to good? Let me get my guap right. No matter, you just told yourself, good, now I'm just going to change. Where I have the guap in the bank or whatever, just going to change and believe in this and that. Because I know it's a lonely place if you don't have enough money. Because mm. you can talk all you want. No matter, no matter, you show, you prove a right. They won't come back or it's not like maybe you need your approval. But they won't say, open said it or anything because. You you got nothing to show. Just think about it if maybe I'm sorry for excellency time. Just think if you Patrice Why are you saying sorry for using his name? I mean I don't wanna catch I don't wanna catch smoke. No, I'm just asking. No, I don't wanna catch any smoke. I understand. Is it because he's so wealthy? I don't wanna catch any smoke. No, forget smoke. I'm saying you could have used Patrice Motsipe, you could have used Ubab Shabalala down the road. No, because Pe- Patrice, we have a mass. Is it because he's old or is it because he's very wealthy? He's old and wealthy. It's because he's wealthy. Mm. Okay. No, no, please continue. I was just yeah, asking. so just imagine if, if we, he thought. A time of Patrice Motsipe, he would have been in the Yeah. With all that man. How many people would have followed him? I have to try and keep the answer short now. It's the same now. Be you. It's it's the same thing on Bozoguti. Why in Kloni, but just because of Nimali. It's a valid question. So yeah, you can it's align really your, your answer to to this. It's a very important question, man. You know, when you meet someone, especially a, someone that you're attracted to, mm. like a woman, you need to figure out what their value system is. If the yeah. value system is about money, you must know that Baba wants you see flame, she's out. Because <laughs> she's only here to secure the bag. Yeah. If her value system is looks, mm, mm. Uh, and one day, or you, you get burnt, Gone. it's flame. So it's important to know a person's value system. Um, I've never cared about money my mm. whole life growing up. Um, I think like most people, I was probably raised to believe that having a lot of money means you're evil, or you've done evil, or not evil per se, but we are... We live in this schizophrenic world, especially as, let me call it the poor masses in the world, but specific to South Africa, poor black people, where we want money, but we're, we're not taught to comfortably speak about it. Like, I mean, I want to have a lot of money. You'll almost be shouted at. Religiously, you'll be taught the root of, money is the root of all evil. Other people, hey, and we're not really taught to idolize wealthy people when we're young. We're taught to idolize academics, Maybe pastors, and then uh, maybe some people who have done well in society. Uh, whereas other communities, they're very big on, on focusing on the money aspect. I never cared for money. I realized that I had dreams, and I came to that conclusion when I was young that to ignite my dreams, I need to amass a lot of money. Number one, so that I don't need to work for money to earn a buck or to have shelter. I'll earn passive income, and then I can do whatever I want. Um, and number two, because I thought you need money to ignite certain dreams. You want to build an art gallery. Um, you want to sponsor certain kids to travel overseas. That was back in 2012, I think. I read an article in the Playboy magazine. I don't read Playboy magazine. A friend of mine, oh, Pascal Lang, I was visiting him and he's an avid reader. He had a Playboy magazine. I looked, I, I laughed at him. I texted him, find the Playboy, Playboy. He was like, no, Fetu, they actually have really dope articles. Mm. So I browsed through it and I bumped, uh, I bumped across an article on this guy called Mark Rich. So Mark Rich, is, uh, he's passed on now. He's a commodities trader, moving gold, coal, oil, whatever. And he became a dollar billionaire, but he also became wanted in America because he was trading with apartheid South Africa and other mm. countries that they had sanctioned. 
Mark Rich would give birth to what we call Glencore today as a as a company. Glencore that supplies Amalashi to Escom. They've taken over Caltex. They're rebranding as Estron. They do commodities all over the world. They were fined, I think, a billion dollars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for bribes, et cetera, et cetera. And after reading that article, I was like, you know what, I, I, I think I want to do this money thing, man. I'd read Rich Dad Put Dad back in 2006, and I was like, if I can just make 100 million. So for a long time on Facebook, I was just like, hashtag 100 million. Hashtag 100 million. I just want to make 100 million. And if I can make 100 million, I never need to work a day in my life. And I can then make music. I can make artworks. I can write books. I can sponsor kids. I can invest in anyone's cool idea. You fast forward like years beyond that and I realized that the greatest inventions and the greatest movements in the world were not paid for. The pyramids were not built with money. It's not like if I had Patrice Mutsipe money, I would build pyramids. You don't need pyramids to build money. So you need one of two things. The one is you must be a tyrant and you must be willing to enslave people and force them to build, which has happened across the world. America was built on slavery. South Africa, being one of the top economic countries on the African continent, was built with a form of slavery or exploitation. Um, that was not money. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, which is the wealthiest country in the world, and yet the poorest, one of the poorest countries in the world money-wise, it's wealthy because of the resources, but it's poor because of the exploitation. So money is just a tool, but it is not the most powerful tool. People can do amazing things without money. Then I went down a rabbit hole to try and figure out what is it. And the what is it was psychology. The reason we worship money so much is because it is a psychological tool. The reason most people are poor is because they have not hacked that it's a psychological tool, which is why they undervalue themselves. The reason why rich people are so rich is because they understand that money is a psychological tool and they psychologically sidestep and outmaneuver and outsmart you so that you will give them your life. 20 years for a bond, a bond for a house. You will give them 20 years of your life for a property that they took six months to build using resources from the earth, soil, clay, water, because psychologically they know how to mastermind you. And I realized that I, I need to figure out how to win people over psychologically to a point where someone can be willing to give you the most amount of money. And if you're like, no, I will always maybe put my family first. I will always put maybe black people first. I will always maybe put South Africans first. I will always put to pen first. Uh, if it's not halal, I won't eat it. doesn't matter how much you pay me. If it's not kosher, I won't eat it. doesn't matter how much you pay me. If it is not for the black man, I don't care how much you pay me. This is going to be me selling out. If it is not for the Afrikaner nation, I don't care how much you pay me. I will not do it. That is now psychological power. And I realize that what I need to work on is the minds of people. Bitcoin today, cryptocurrencies today are powerful because of psychology, not because they are worth anything. Bitcoin is no different to me valuing this glass at 50 rand. And then Kanye West comes and drinks from it. And then he auctions it for $50,000. And then Beyonce Knowles comes and drinks from it. And then she auctions it for $200,000. And then someone comes and says, this was actually Nelson Mandela's glass in prison. It is priceless. He'll never come back. We're auctioning it for me. That is just a psychological trick. Money was meant to be a tool of exchanging life. How much of your life are you willing to give for someone else's life? Now, life is goods and services. How long does it take you to grow a piece of cabbage? How long does it take a cow to give birth to a calf? How long does it take you to manufacture this table? That's your time and that's your life. And you say, I will value my time and my life 50 rand, 100 rand, 2000 rand. And then the person on the other side must pay you for your life because they think this thing that they're getting is worth more than your life. And if you can get people psychologically to understand how valuable their life is, it doesn't matter how much money you give them. So I stopped valuing money and I started valuing goods and services, number one, number two. But more importantly, I started valuing psychology. 
Nothing in this world has actually been built with money. It's been built by human beings. They just happen to trade their time and skills for what we call money. Mm. I can get, as we as Ayashembe, as Wabli Khanyane, I can get a million people to be willing to put their lives down for me. I can do it as the Islamic nation. I can do it as a patriotic American to put my life. There is no money. It's America before anything else because I own the minds of people. And once you can do that, you can build anything that you want. And that's the journey that I'm on now where I value human beings, their time, their skills, their knowledge, their loyalty, their creativity. And that's all I try to plug in. And how do I get you to give me that? At the lowest form, at the cheapest form, I'll pay you in money. But at the highest form, I can inspire you to just draw a portrait of me just because you're like, who pen inspires me, dog? I'm going to take <coughs> five days of my life to paint a picture of him. I'm going to take five years of my life to create a statue for him. That is the power of Jesus Christ. That is the power of Kanye West. The power to say, it's not even about money. This guy owns my mind. And that's why my life purpose to this day now is to hack and take over like a virus and colonize as many minds as possible mm -hmm. and get them to be on my frequency so that it doesn't matter how many bitcoins, rands, dollars, yen, pounds you're offered. It doesn't matter if you're threatened with prison. It doesn't matter if you're threatened with your life. You're like, if Penel says we must do it, we'll do it. If he says we mustn't do it, we will not do it. Sounds like a portage system to me. It, it is. It's, it's every valuable system. It's your surname, Mushanga. It's being a proud Zulu man. It is being a proud South African. Someone hacked your mind and convinced you that this is noble and worth living for and maybe dying for. Yeah. And you've bought into it and it works and it costs more than money. Money is just the thing that we use to get by, to pay rent and to get petrol and to buy food. That's all. In terms of Undate, uh, in terms of what Patrice Motsipe, he, he has nothing without money. If he loses his money tomorrow, he's worthless. You compare him to someone with less money, Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma without money is powerful. Because people are willing yeah, to well, serve Ubab Zuma without getting a single cent. People will serve Ubab Petris because he's paid them. Ubab Zuma could just, and, and that, that speaks volumes. I mean, when we speak about Steve Jobs, it is not that he was a dollar billionaire. It is what the ingenuity of his mind created. And how we were all convinced into the beauty of the iPhone and Apple products and... All of us now, when we create products, we want to make them luxury. We want a, a brand that people identify with. Mm. You are cool because you have an iPhone. Mm. Without an iPhone, you're not cool. So every slay queen wants an iPhone. Every person wants to wear Louis Vuitton every, because of the brand association. So that is, that is bigger than money. Mm. It's the reason why people support certain sports teams. Because you want to be associated with the Springboks or with Lionel Messi with Ronaldinho because you like the brand is big I don't know how much Ronaldinho earns and I don't care I don't know where he lives I don't know what he drives I don't care but the brand is that powerful so if Patrice Motsipe thought like me with the influence that he had through his father Augustine and he managed to rally up because this is what makes Nelson Mandela so powerful we don't know how much money he had and we don't care if he managed to get that type of power where he can hack the most influential minds on the planet where Barack Obama, uh, Beyonce Knowles, any leader you can think of, Sia Kolisi now is like, I want to give thanks to Dad or Nelson Mandela. That is supreme power because a person is willing to bleed for you, not for money, but just for your existence and your words. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he has it, unfortunately. It's like Cyril now. Cyril without presidency and Cyril without money has got nothing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Apartheid, can you take it there? You you miss apartheid? Nah. You want us to go back there? Nah, I want to talk about the system as a whole. Yeah. And how, do you think it's still affecting us to this day? <clears throat> apartheid. The apartheid system, uh, I can't use this guy's name. Where? 
Okay, right. so I won't use his name because the video will get taken down. Come on. There's a leader. I, I don't want you to say his name. So please don't <laughs> even say his name, even yeah. when it comes into your head. Yeah. There's a leader from Europe, um, top three economies in the world. You know, they make some of the best cars on the planet. Oh, yeah. They make some of the best sports brands on the planet. They've got an amazing mm. football team. Mm. This leader is the most, one of the most controversial leaders in the world, mm. historically. Now, he's got two sides to him. And this is how I feel about apartheid. And it's one of the things a lot of black people don't understand about me when I speak about apartheid to Afrikaans people. So there's the one part that he's popular for, which was horrific and horrendous, and it was wrong. And everyone, everyone, including people of his nation, said what happened there was tragic and it was wrong. On the other side, this guy took a country with employment levels similar to ours now in South Africa, and he took an economy that was not doing well, mm. and he industrialized that country. He made the people focus on their country, and they built some of the companies that we value today, that we love so much. The they were built yeah. off exploited labor. They were built off ingenuity. I mean, the same guy who designed the Porsche is the same guy that designed the VW Beetle. It's the exact same guy. Uh, look at how we value Amav and the brand. Uh, you look at the clothing, you look at the cars. He did it exceptionally well. So because we can't speak about him, we miss out on that lesson of, okay, let's put the atrocities aside, but how can we learn from the industrialization part and building drip to Makosa, more fire, whatever brand you can think of, into global brands like those ones. The apartheid system was similar. It had, it was, it's a tale of, it's, it's a tale of, it's two tales rather in one. There's the one part of the exploitation of black people and the forced segregation of black people and forcing black people off their land. No one in their right minds will say that was right. Everyone condemns it, including myself. But then there's the other side of visionary leadership that said, we will not rely on the world. We will build our own industries. We will build Cecil to refine our own oil we, and, and create our own petroleum. We will um, build our own electricity, which powers so many African countries to this day, even though it's been destroyed by the ANC, mm -hmm. which was ESCOM. We will build our own telecoms networks, and we'll call that telecom. We will take our steel. We won't send it overseas as a raw product, iron ore. We will develop our own steel, and they built the ESCO. ESCO. We will manufacture our own weapons because it is important for us to defend ourselves as a country and they call that arms corps they built industry they built the highways we boast about today some of the universities we boast about this economy we have even today i'm up on if you look at mining a core industry most of the mining operation is done by afrikaners most of the commercial farms are run by afrikaners the Springboks that we're celebrating today are still lodged in Afrikaner institution. Some of the best schools we have, and, 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 and. There is so much to learn from the apartheid government and the system they built. The only problem is that it was exclusionary. They kept out talented, great people just because they were black. One of the dumbest things you can ever do in the modern world is keep out people based on race, gender, sexuality, nationality. Yeah, but you're Zimbabwean. Yeah, but it's because you're a woman. Ah, but we don't have time for gays like you. And you're like, that gay person you don't like? That guy's got a sensational brain. He's going to build something amazing. That woman you don't like is going to be the greatest podcaster of all time. That whatever, that black guy is going to be the best springboard captain of all time. But you want to keep him out just because he's black. Yeah and you miss out on so much talent. So those of us who have a high emotional intelligence, I'm not gonna say smarter, those of us who are less emotional about history and the world, we have an ability to dissect things. We have got celebrities in this country that have been accused of crimes, of rape, of violence, etc. A person of a high emotional intelligence can say, hey, Lomchita makes amazing music. Hey, Lomchi does an amazing actor. Yeah, but he beat up his woman. But he stole money. You're like, yes, he did. And it's wrong. And he must be punished. But we are she, Sabah. You can't deny. No, we must cancel his music. R. Kelly. You're like, no, you can cancel him. You don't like him. You don't like his personality. You don't like what he's done. Sure. 
Bandwana, I believe I can fly, kept me going through tough times. The leap of faith, um, what's that other song? I believe I can fly. These are, these are songs, bro, that, that had good people going, going through adversity. So we need to advance to a high emotional intelligence where we can separate good and bad behavior, good and bad people, and, and, and. And the apartheid system was an amazing system. And it is a system that to this day, we probably need to go and study and see how can we improve upon it. So the Bantu stands were conceptually a good idea. So Waputatswana, Kwazulu, we had the Siskai and the Transkai, etc. Conceptually a good idea. These are your people. I am of the Basutu people. I'm of Amutwana. No, I mean, okay, we're going to give you your own piece of land. And on this land, you can build banks like Itala. You can build your own industries. And you guys can be proud. You can be like a Swati and be your own nation. Mm. We're the nation of Uzulu. Our soccer team can beat anyone. Our rugby team as Siskai or Transkai. But the implementation and the forcing people and the withdrawal of or the keeping out of skills was a mistake. So how do you take the apartheid system and say, not just for white Afrikaners, but for all South Africans, number one. And then number two, we need to say segregation works. But how? No, segregation is bad. It's not bad. In our own homes, we've got a fence. Within a complex, you are fenced. The question is, how do you, how do you fence and how is the movement defined? EEFF speaks about a borderless South Africa. And I think one of the things they're missing is not... We must open the borders. It's to say Africans must travel freely if they are good people, if they are coming to spend money, if they are sharing skills and knowledge. But they mustn't just flow to places and crowd them, but they must move freely <coughs> uh, within reason. So how do we create segregation where we say, if you are an engineer, the engineers are mostly in Pumalanga because there's mines. If you are a farmer, the farmers are mostly in Limpopo because there's a lot of... If you are an entertainment guy, everyone knows Johannesburg is the entertainment place. If you are into shipping and all, oh, those are the Durban guys. Mm. It's a segregation and we make sure that that economy takes care of those people. And we make sure that this economy, but they trade and they move freely, but they are not congested. Because the problem we have today is congestion in Johannesburg, in Cape Town, in Durban. Everyone is fleeing in Makaya and we're not getting to build. In China, uh, I was sitting with Uzimasa, Vabaza, Mustafa on social media. Mm. He was saying in China, they are intentional about spreading out the wealth. Intentional. So you will take, I'll use the apartheid example. You will take ESCOM and you will put it in the Eastern Cape mm -hmm. and say all our electricity is developed in the, is, is generated from the Eastern Cape. All the jobs, the engineers, all the suppliers, they're all there. Then you take AMSCO and you put AMSCO in the Western Cape. All our military, all our weapons are being developed there. Sorry, 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 man. The Amsco Valley currently is the Western Cape. No, no, no. Oh. No, I'm just using an example. Yeah, yeah. I just spreading out because, industry. Because yeah. right, right now, most of our companies are condensed in Johannesburg. Oh. It's easy for business, but it doesn't develop the rest of the nation. It doesn't develop the rest yeah, of the sort nation. Of so you, 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 want, you want to spread yeah. out economies so that a person doesn't need to make money only in Joburg. You can be rich anywhere in the country. You just choose what industry you want to be in and, 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 and. Mm. So when it comes to apartheid, people get emotional because it's an emotional time. Now, nah, but what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. But not in a... Maybe uh, it's a tired of context because of the word apartheid. Maybe you can develop a system similar to the apartheid. Sure. But... Different, different values. No, nah, no, I don't want to say values. Maybe we can implement it as in using to like you saying, which it shouldn't be, which other blacks shouldn't get these girls in, 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 in. all those. If maybe now, so it's pretty clear. For in a democracy, it's a no go area for it doesn't work. If we can get something in front of the apartheid, in our values are fun and apartheid, no, to go to. No, build a, a build a similar system, system, but change the values. The values, oh yeah. yeah. We're currently living in apartheid. Uh, I think some people know that. Number one, that's why I was asking. We're still living do do? in the legacy, across racial, mm. but now we're graduating to an apartheid based on class. What you're saying about money, 
Yeah. So the people with the money live here and they get these services and mm. things get sorted. And the poor people, of which some of them are white today, very few, but they are poor white people. They live as if they were black people back then. So we still have apartheid is an Afrikaans word for segregation, segregation. or separateness. So we're still separate. That's why people are like Apelan and Chalisenti no cheese. That is basically saying, and we still said now Ungam la umlung. I need a pillar pillar jungle lungin. You know, and then you've got people that are poor living like what black people were living like back then. Classism based on money, classism based on education and information. If you have more knowledge, information than me, you live a better life. Mm -hmm. I'm poor because I don't have access to information. Um, so those are the things we need to change. Yeah. But a system, so the apartheid system put white Afrikaners first. We need a system that puts South, South Africans African first. first. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's going to discriminate against other Africans. It's going to discriminate against people from America, Europe, and Asia. But it will put South Africans first. Then it's going to be a matter of how do we spread this out? Because even with Amapun, um, you've got Pretoria, you've got Bloemfontein, you've got Cape Town, where Cape Town. Afrikaans people are based. You can still separate South Africa into portions. It will be non-racial. It will be non-sex based. And then it mustn't be based on money. And mm -hmm. it mustn't be based on education. But we will spread people out and say we are segregating. I mean, even the concept of provinces is a form of apartheid. But we can't say that because we're like, no, you know, free state, we beat you guys. What do you like? <laughs> we're still in the separation thing. But mm -hmm. to what you're saying, it must be with a building agenda. Yeah, yeah. How are we building? We've got if, if PSN, we've got Iraq. The teams compete, but they compete with the with the objective of building. Mm -hmm. It is not that his sundowns gets all the money from EPSN and all the other teams are poor. Mm -hmm. And if you don't play for Sundowns, you're poor. No, it's it's to say we must all spread it out so that everyone everyone develops. That's that's the conversation we need to have. But yeah, part of it, it was it was it was emotional because so many people died, so many people were killed, so many so many people struggled. And most people, most human beings struggle to manage their emotions. It's the reason why they're also so easy to control and manipulate. Oh. Because they are highly emotional people. I show you a picture of a black person being hurt, automatically I get your emotions going. I show you a picture of a woman being violated as a woman, automatically. I show you a picture of a South African, something happening to them in a foreign country, automatically you become xenophobic. We are highly emotionalized people and that's why it's easy to control and manipulate. And we need to get people to operate on a higher frequency if if we want to win. Yeah. The next question, I'm, I'm, I don't have enough info on or on that on this question. I'm gonna ask you, but I, I wanna know if you have. During apartheid, there wasn't maybe like a book-like thing, like a constitution where like isn't obvious, but you could see this, this, that, that, that. Because I ask myself, you could see if they were able to develop a system as Yagma Township, and. Bebas ugu ugu tuba ba inzani apa gutu taka kaga sali lokshi ni sopi li prata zake gani inzia ke izo baga nje na nje dizo mienza psychological guta tamu chiga gani so lozo zinto if mi nangis chole zumondo umangis chole guto okay so ugu beka zake zake sort of a prison for utak so niyazbo zuguti aiyi kule ndengo tini samwe sa uguti Yai pali wale ntu guto case so baise lokshin mas baise lokshin ba salaga njenga njenga eni ndeng kalingi zbuza nguti if the government yetu is seriously fun guti if fun guz keep agu kule systemi aparte tle sabagu before wa wodung cha cha ung pilde le RTP the same model the same model le le yo presa ya mbe yanza what is the house has to be small, it tried to make a big one, Jenny. Toilet, Melika, and Yonki in toilet. And then when I as <laughs> my free, maybe if there's a word, it's one child. When I was on not the same system, you would see Zoma Kelly into a cars or some Tawang and Nuguti, maybe Manga Bapam was sent in Zoba more inspired, you would see. Same close la. But on Bissella Cornica, same sure. system. Then so one goes with. That's why I should go to Lombuzo. I'm on a information on me. I just sure. had lap and a lap. Good. There wasn't a book in Flambe back there. And I show you good. Okay, this is how we're gonna make a black slave. Good to source. So means a source. Hey, how so. to make a black slave? How to make uh, a slave? That's Willie Lynch. And that one now will be good. He said, um, I think after 200 years, they'll be perfect slave. And the 200 years ago, I think it was 2019. Hectic. 
So this 2000 inch? Yeah, we read that. We are sugar after this. Yeah. Bazo bar right in 2019. So 2019. Mental slavery, be kala gashi gashi, be sick in the leg band. So it's only if you are by Bona, I could see. No, this one called a Pelagu, Lihichi Lapane. It's for which in Jesiba Nabantuana Napal. It's part of his plan. You never told a pant outside of a marriage. Of a marriage, oh. yeah. Uguti, you have to, it's part of his plan. Sure. Uguti, that's how it, that's how it destroy a family figure. Yeah, you asked you ask me a question yeah. around democracy and if I believe in it. Yeah. And maybe the answer will come out here. Uh, I think the father of apartheid, I stand to be corrected, is Hendrik Vervoet. Uh, he had a doctorate, PhD, mm -hmm. uh, I think in psychology, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong. Uh, he did study overseas as well at some point. So the people that built the system are intelligent people, learned people. They had a plan. They knew what they were. And doing. they knew, but they were be, be, be on it because if, if he's a psych, if he's a graduate school psychology, he knew good and meant things like this and that and that. Yeah. If he means so, who's a tabanga? So if he means so, so they were like be be not deal in No, no, no. Of course. So they knew what they were doing and understand that the the black activists that were fighting to dismantle apartheid, a lot of them were were educated through these similar systems. Number one. A lot of them were not trying to decolonize the system. They were trying to just be included. So are you telling me the ANC back then wanted to be or wanted to be part of the government? The the ANC, or they wanted to govern. The ANC, see, they, all, they wanted to be there on the pallet with Buffalo you Taylor know? The ANC were, the ANC was a bunch of educated black people, educated within South Africa and the oh, systems of the time. Their biggest frustration was that they, they are not being consulted. So right now, some of us complain about how our government is behaving and we want to be included. Not many people are trying to get into parliament to dismantle and decolonize. That's powerful. That's powerful. Uh, you look That's at the young powerful. kids, go NC Youth League, you look at even guys like the EFF, they still want to go to the but same they, parliament. Ask his call on the pile up because this guy is... Like the free thinkers and stuff. Marabangena, Bangena, it's like it's called the ANC. One game about Chelly with Tebaba. These are the rules, Ganji Ganji. Because after I suppose with Maralumutagabo, what's happening around us? Sure. The system works, bro. I'll tell you. Uh, so, no, it's chill. So the <laughs> ANC is just one leg. There was the PAC as well, which mm -hmm. was a breakaway with Robert Sobuwe. Uh, the father of black consciousness. Probably as one of the best models of decolonization, being Stephen Bantu Bigo. He was big on segregation, by the way. He wanted black people to self determine on their own. Oh, it was one of the things he stood for, along with Robert Sobuk. It was one of the clashes they had with the ANC. The ANC wanted an interracial, mm -hmm. non racial South Africa. Ubantu mm Bigo -hmm. uh, and Mangaliso Sobu, where they were saying, no, we want to develop on our own. We don't want this westernized, colonized way of living. When they then supposedly took over the country after Codessa, they had a negotiated settlement. And in the negotiated settlement, there was the handover from the same apartheid guys. So you can imagine that they were told that this thing works. And if you guys want to run this country, and if you want to have a strong economy, and if you want to be rich as the political elite, this is how it's done. That's why not much was changed. The plan was not to turn South Africa into what it was before colonizers came here. The plan was not to build a futuristic African nation, like in Wakanda, as an example. Mm -hmm. The plan was for black people to just uh, participate. We don't want to dismantle the spring box. No, no, no. We just want more black faces. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be the same rugby. You must be big and tall. You must tackle hard. We're not changing the game. We just want darker people involved. That's all that the guys actually really, really did. That's why not much has changed. And you'll use Patrice Motsipe as an example, you use Cyril Ramaphosa as an example. There are so many other BEE mm. beneficiaries today. Mm. They behave exactly like wealthy white people before them. There's no difference. If you look at Cyril, Patrice, Christo Visa, Johan Rupert, Yanni Muton, there is no difference except the color of their skin. They donate to charities, they create jobs, they pay taxes, they are billionaires, they live in fancy homes. But there's nothing unique. There's nothing unique except that they are black. Black. So 
we haven't had a decolonized agenda. And most of the people that push for a decolonized agenda, they cannot articulate what it looks like. Maybe Vuyo Zungul at the ATM is one of the guys. Uh, maybe Andile Mletama at BLF. Black First, Land First is one of the guys. Mm -hmm. They have not been able to... You know, sometimes I, I sat at... When there was still the Branson Center in, uh, of Entrepreneurship in Brown. They made us in one of the exercises draw a picture of our perfect customer. Who is your perfect customer? Is it a woman? Is it a man? Are they black? Are they white? Where do they live? How much do they earn? Draw, draw the pic. Don't write. Draw them. We have not seen drawn pictures of a futuristic South Africa or Africa. <laughs> where Andile Mletama or Vuyo Zumula or someone else who is black conscious is saying, guys, this is what we're working towards. Because if they did that, I would be one of the people saying, Orania, another Afrikaans space that gets people angry, use the Orania model, Andile Mletama. Go find a piece of land, go build Wakanda. And then show black people, guys, this is the thing. It's possible. This is why you must support me. This is why you must fund me. This is why you must put me in power. Because this is the model. Mm -hmm. they, they talk. They want to get into parliament. They want votes. They want funding. But they haven't drawn a picture of this thing. Now, in this country, white right, democracy doesn't work. Because democracy is a good idea, man. Shame. It's, 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 a, really, a, it's, a, it's a really cute idea. <laughs> democracy is no different to one day we'll all be rich. We should all be rich. We should all be driving Ferraris. Democracy cannot exist where the people are politically illiterate or to put it simply politically stupid. Uh, you are asking a five-year-old to vote on the affairs of the house and the budget of the house and where they must go to school and what must be eaten as a diet. Mm. Those kids will be like, no school. We want to eat ice cream and sweets. We want to sleep at two in the morning. Mm. No one is going to work mm -hmm. because it's democracy. My father says we must do whatever we want. I'm five, but nothing for no peer. That's what democracy is to a politically ignorant person. And most South Africans do not know their ward councillor just where they live. I'm asking what number. I'm asking what councillor. They don't know their mayor. And they don't know the people that work in their local municipality. They don't know the premier of their province. And they don't know the, the, M, the MECs, the MMCs at a lower level. They don't know the members of parliament. Most people maybe can tell you 10. If they know politics, they might tell you 20. But they know like 10 guys. That's, that's all they know. So when they vote, which is just one cross, it's like a child as well, multiple choice. Just pick one. It's silly. It's, it's such a silly model. And it goes back to this thing you were saying about apartheid and the psychology and the system. It's ujali loto. And you're gambling at the, it's fun. I'm an Antoine for Delhi. And you get pumped. to am trying to get somebody. You know how many chiefs? Hey, Kaiser Chiefs. You know how many pirates? You know what I mean? It's, you, you sit back and you look at it. You're like, you guys are, are clowns. Democracy works where a person understands politics, understands governing systems, understands all the role players, knows the various budgets, knows how the budgets are allocated, Someone who maybe is involved even in the tendering, because tendering is something that every single South African should be doing. And then, all of yeah. us are meant to apply for tenders. It's and not for a, a certain group of people. Not a lot of people yeah. are informed to go, go to go by tender premier. I got it for it's my not politics just for or uh, yeah, yeah. my politicians or uh, it's for every South for African everyone. who got one And it doesn't matter if you know metric or net I'd degree. Everyone should be applying Marasa for it. Of course. Of course. So understand tendering. Understand tendering. Understand tendering. Mm. Uh, be actively involved. You don't need to belong to a political party. You don't need to attend branch meetings. Do you have that time when you go back to you know, No, no, I'm saying you don't have to join political parties. Mm. Being actively involved is knowing the things I said. Oh. And then in your own neighborhood, knowing what say there's a portal that needs to be closed. I'm going to go report it. In your neighborhood, you patrol who takes it, who's safe. In your neighborhood, you see Kony Fans and Eko Grand. In your neighborhood, there's a school there that needs a donation, a stationary, or the kids need uniform. That is being actively involved in governance. You deserve democracy. When? But for everyone else who doesn't know these things and who doesn't do work, they do not deserve democracy. What they deserve is either a king or a pastor or a parent or a dictator who's going to tell them, you will 
live in a Bantu stan. You will study Bantu education. You will go work in a mine. You will go, because clearly you're a child and you're not willing to educate yourself and you're not willing to put in the work. So South Africa is very far from deserving a democracy. As it stands now, we've got 40 million people that could vote. Only 17 million vote out of 40. 17 million. So the other 23 million, if my math is not right, yeah, it's not wrong. The other 23 million are not even voting. But they'll tell you, I believe in Democrats. You're like, you're not even voting. Okay, it's fine. You're not voting. You chose not to vote. You don't like the party. It's fine. Are you actively involved in governance? Because politics, by the way, just like tenders, politics is not a, it's not a PSL. It's not football. It, it's not politics as a term, even if you look at the definition, is about the governing of a place. Mm. And governing is not just joining a political party and being in parliament. Governing is things like closing potholes. It's things like making sure your neighborhood is safe. Mm. It's things like making sure the, the kids go to decent schools. It's things like making sure that you have got a local economy. Mm. That is governance. It's leadership. I want to leadership. We speak about stuff like that. Making sure that you clean a new area. So that doesn't need, are you actively involved in governance? So South Africans do not deserve democracy, but what we do need, not deserve, what we need, we need more intelligent people who, like Hendrik Fervut, are going to educate themselves, study the world, travel, and go and learn the best governance methods in the world. China, Russia, America, Germany, Singapore, Finland, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, Canada, they must go and study them and then come, like you say, and write a blueprint. What does a residential area look like? If it's not going to be the townships of apartheid, if it's not going to be RTP, uh, Democra Democratic South Africa, if it is not going to be Eslali in Emakaya, the rural villages, then what does it look like? Paint us a picture. Guys, this is what it's going to look like. This is how people are going to live. Everyone's going to have their own space for livestock. Everyone's going to have their own yard. Everyone's going to have their own grass, what's what. What is the sport going to look like? No, the sports of the future is not going to be rugby. It's going to be swimming. It's going to be flying airplanes. It's going to be... What are people eating? The future of what we're eating as a country, we're going more plant-based, less meat, so that we can lower gout and we can lower heart disease and what, what. The future healthcare, the future healthcare is we're going to have more Vizinyang. We're going to have more herbalists. We're going to have more homeopathy. The future of education, the future of education is with dismantled classrooms. Every child is on a laptop, is on a phone. If they're not that, they're on a, on a farm. They're not that they're in a studio. If they're not doing that, they're in a workshop, building something. What is the future dress code? The future dress code is we live in Africa. No one is going to be wearing a tie. Why are we wearing ties and shirts? Why are you wearing a suit? Say Africa, we wear sleeveless so that we breathe. The men are going to be wearing some kind of skirt because <laughs> that is the future dress code. And you have a plan, sorry. And you have a plan. And you sell this plan to people and some will adopt and then some will be like, we'll give you funding, just like a national party with the broader bond, and we want you guys to govern. And they'll say, when we govern, no more union buildings. Union buildings are going to turn into a playground for children. Mm. We're going to put wild animals there, zebra, springbok, uh, giraffe, so that kids can come and have a good time. And the union buildings, one section is going to be podcast studios, one section is going to be an art gallery, what, what. Mm. We're going to be governing on the ground. Every member of parliament, if you want to call them that, or every leader is going to be on the ground working with the people. That's what Uche Guevara was about, yeah, Ernesto yeah. Guevara de la Serna in Cuba. When they got into power, Abo Fidel Castro, Abo Raul Castro, Castro, they got into power, he said, I don't want any of these things. I don't want a fancy car. I don't want a government house. I will stay in my little house that I can afford with my little bit of money. On weekends, he would go and work in the farms with the people he'd carry on wearing the clothes that he was wearing. Mm. That was a man who was saying, I'm a servant of the people. I'm a servant leader. I am there with the people. We do not have that today. Abu Julia's can fake wear their overalls and their domestic worker outfits. The reality is as soon as they move out of that circus we call parliament, they go and they wear their Gucci's and their Louis Vuitton's and they live in their beautiful homes at Hyde Park mm. and they drive their nice cars and they send their kids to expensive private schools because they don't really mean what they're saying. They're just selling it as a story, but they're not living it. Mm. And the people that are living it in this country are not given support by the people they meant to get support from. Mm. So you need strong minds that are going to build systems, not 
tell people a nice story. One day we'll get the land. You're like, no, no, no. I'm not going to tell them they're going to get the land. I'm going to build a system where Ushang is going to find himself to, hey, Shang, mm-hmm. because you've now gotten your master's degree, because you've now worked for five years, because you've now got your certificates in farming, uh, his system dictates that we must now give you 10 hectares of land and we're going to give you 15 heads of cattle. You're like, but I didn't apply. It's like, no, 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 we don't care about you. It's the system. The system has said you will get it and you have a responsibility. Because when you let people decide for themselves, like democracy, they decide on rubbish. So you, the system where we say kids must go to school, that is not something we've picked. The system has decided that we must use money. By the way, the future of trade is going to be going back to bartering. We're going to move away from money and we're going to go to bartering. People say it's crypto. I think it's bartering. Where we say quantify value. I want food. You've got food because you've got a farm. I can wash your car or I can educate your kids. You will give me food. I'll educate your kids and we'll capture it in some type of way on an app. Mm. Uh, not as a currency, Blockchain. but it's going to be us bartering. And the, the things we're going to barter are going to be real things. Don't just give me 50 rand or That's give a chick what what. It's... it's it's an exchange of value kind of situation. So we need thinkers that are going to build that in South Africa. There are people that I think are trying to build that in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates, uh, maybe in Tokyo, maybe in Hong Kong, maybe in Toronto, maybe in places like San Francisco, Los Angeles, maybe New York, um, maybe Geneva, maybe London. There are certain places in the world where futuristic thinkers are sitting and they're planning and they're plotting and they're creating spaces we need people like that yeah. and when they come here they mustn't tell us they mustn't oh black pen my podcast they must go build the systems yeah. and then you must want them you must be like because i want a uniform and the kids learn how to farm mm. and the kids learn how to create and the kids bash my podcast mm. because they're going to invest a hundred thousand rand in me but then i'm going to die of heart disease in two years <laughs> Because their models have shown which this guy's overweight, this mm. guy smokes, this guy doesn't exercise. Mm. If you invest in him, he's gonna drop dead and you're gonna lose your money. So if you are in good health, we're not gonna give you a hundred thousand. You qualify for six hundred thousand because you're still gonna do a lot of great things. Oh, yeah. And we build those type of models and systems that are futuristic on how to run like a, a better world. Um and then for me, I I really want us to build a world that is outside of money, where people can say, I don't like money, I don't want to work for money, but I'd still like to have a good life. And we say we've taken a snapshot of the old world and we've created these neighborhoods where you can plant and grow food and have chickens and you can educate your kids and you can sing and you can make your own clothes and you can live primitive and no one is going to disturb you here mm. because you are saying, clamping here Rasta, well, I'm a Buddhist. I don't want to be in the money system. I want to smoke my weed. I want to do my dreads. I want to deliver my own babies with my woman. We're going to wear sheep wool. We're going to wear cloth. We're going to fetch uh, water from the river. We don't need electricity. We don't need cell phone network. We don't need cell phone, Baba. And you're like, we want to create those spaces for people to be able to unplug. And even people from the money world, at any given time, when they're like, I'm tired of, of the money system. I'm drained. You can plug into that untainted natural world where you're almost going back in time, where you're eating umbila, bride over a flame, where you're slaughtering with your hands and you're eating in Yama, that's AOC with someone you're like, I just needed to recuperate before I go back into this crazy world. Mm. And I think some of us can do it, man. It just, it takes a small spark and it takes conversations like these ones, you know. You and, know, the last knows? time I asked Chet GPT, do you believe in God? <laughs> it answered, it said, I don't like engaging in things that cannot be proven true or not. Who put that type of coding in there? I don't know because I know information there. No, but I'm but it's some, people. Someone it's people. Yeah, that, so, so, that, someone, that yeah. stuff. Machines are not machines currently. They are human. Yeah. What I was saying is there's a bias. One of the reasons why specifically Africans and specifically Asians must engage with technology aggressively oh, on man. X, on Meta, on the internet is so that when a perfect human is created by these machines. It is not a blonde, blue-eyed, oh. white man. So we need to engage. We need to ubungoma, ubayinyanga, isintu, omvilmangi, otiko, ukulumis nguni, ukulumis suit, ukulumis pedi. Oh, this black woman is so beautiful. Yo, I love a fat ass. 
oh, this black man, I love mm -hmm. this type of hair. You need to fight the machine so much and engage and post as many of those pictures and whatever so that it gathers that information mm. so that when Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk are creating algorithms, that machine can be like, but we've got so much data from Africa and Asia, which is countering what you guys are saying. So we cannot really agree with you because on the internet where you're telling us to go and get our information, there's a lot of data that is opposing what you're saying. Well, Cozy FM is the number one radio station. SAPC One is the most watched thing. We don't care if it's not English. We don't care if it's not white. Mm -hmm. We don't care if it's not pro LGBTQI+. We're not, this is what the majority of South Africans are into. That's why Mocha Love wins. Because this is what people, that's why Tyler Perry makes so much money. This is what people, so you need to push back so that when these machines take over and you speak your language or you engage, it can be like, hey dog, I see you. I see you. Not I see like, you. oh no, we found a reject. There's a flaw here. We need to exterminate, exterminate. Mm. You know, re uh, factory default. Mm. So, yeah. Hey, that's the black. Sean. Your pen. I afraid none just this year. I'm telling you, guys. I'd like to invite Jueno Mama, man, to the panel show. Uh, as we were recording this, I'm not sure when this is coming out. There's a video that is dropped as we're recording on my YouTube channel, Penuel the Black Pen, where I was criticizing some of Udumi's views on Ubungoma. Oh, after the... Mechi. After the podcast and chill episode. So there were a lot of things she said that I fully agreed with. There were a lot of things she said that I fully disagreed with. And I actually went and made a 51-minute video. Yo, 51, that's hours. That's me, boy, talking by myself. Like, he's... Yeah, when the machines come up, bro, they're going to look at me and be like, hey, I think you're one of us. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I'll I'd like to you. invite you guys over... Um, and I'd like us to chat about some of the things that you guys are about mm. and some of the education that, like, the most important thing is our conversation is meant to make minds uncomfortable. We want to plant okay. seeds. Yeah. Don't tell people what to do, but you want to plant an uncomfortable seed so that people out there, on their own, and we're a better, we're a beauty in the Maybe he was... And then they start feeding this thing on their own because yeah. we're trying to liberate minds. Because like I said, people's minds have been captured. And unfortunately, like AI, most human beings are like robots out there. They've been conditioned by schooling, by propaganda, by social media. And we're trying to hack. Mm. Just like ChatGPT and other, we're trying to hack their minds. Yeah. So that when those things come, they can just be like, I can see the thin white girl in a shwapa. My brain is saying, no, I want to thick uh, with a big booty. Yeah. Uh, my system is saying no override override she must be dark skinned with her feathers <laughs> so you must be able to do that even with belief systems even with political leaders even with the type of food we're eating even with the type of healthcare we ingest mm. uh, so I'd like you guys to visit hopefully when you get a chance whenever that may be da, you have a communication no kukuz or chelen dango yeah of it ya wanga hopu lo logo jesin nige gona gwen gondo zapilda something lap keep well love adventures <laughs> 